Hey, what's going on, tech enthusiasts? Bo HD here. I hope you guys are doing well. You're watching Last Week in Tech, the show where we talk about all of the top tech news stories from last week, this week. As always, you can send in your tech news story suggestions to Twitter using the LWIT hashtag. But I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the first story. Now, the first story has to do with the upcoming Snapdragon 820 CPU. It's been teased numerous times over the past several months, but the most recent tease, the most recent announcement, was the fact that the A20 will now have faster LTE and more efficient quick charging. Qualcomm has integrated the X12 LTE modem into the processor, providing LTE Advanced Category 12 in the downlink and Category 13 in the uplink. What this means in English for you and I um, is the fact that we will see download speeds of up to 600 megabytes per second and upload speeds of about 150 megabytes per second. So that's totally enough to stream 4K video both up and down with plenty of bandwidth to spare. Now, in addition to these faster LTE speeds, we also have faster quick charging. So with the Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 technology, it will actually allow you to charge a typical smartphone battery from dead 0% to 80% in just 35 minutes. For comparison, last year, the Note 4 could charge up to 50% from 0% in about 35 minutes. So this is a pretty serious improvement and I'm all for it. Fast charging is awesome. I think we can both agree on that one. Fast charging has kind of uh, made me think less of the terrible battery life of a lot of flagship smartphones, a lot of flagship Android smartphones that we've seen this year. Now I'm not hating, I'm, I'm gonna save that rant for another video. But uh, yeah, I think we both agree that fast charging is pretty dope. But Quick Charge 3.0 has me thinking of the new Google camera version 3.0. See how I made the connection from last story to this story, isn't that, isn't that cool, 3.0? Google is actually set to launch an updated Google camera app when the new Nexus devices are officially launched at the end of September, and it's supposed to be a lot better than previous versions, to say the least. There are a lot of new features, a lot of new design changes that are supposedly included in the update. We have Smart Burst, which will rapidly take multiple pictures and pick out the best picture among the pile and the collection of multiple pictures that were captured. There's a feature called Creations, which will basically automatically create collages and animations from your photos. There will be a 120 and 240 FPS slow motion mode. There will be uh, an automatic HDR plus mode, a dirty lens detection option, so if you smudge your lens, maybe it gets dirty in your pocket or something, It'll uh, the software will detect that and let you know that you should probably clean your lens because there's some stuff on there. So yeah, and also there's a new interface that will let you switch between the photo mode and the video mode by simply swiping from left to right, kind of like, uh, oh, I don't know, on the iPhone camera. So it should be pretty cool. I think it's definitely in need of an upgrade. And with the upgrade, it should help it compete with the iPhone camera and the iPhone camera software. Um, including the iPhone 6s and 6s Plus, which will feature live photos. So best of luck. Hopefully, I'm, I'm just looking forward to getting my hands on the new app. But let's talk specs and speculation of some upcoming new Android devices, shall we? The HTC One A9 smartphone had some of its specs leaked by the one and only Evan Blast from EvLeaks or EvLeaks. I always forget which pronunciation is the correct one, but you guys know who he is. Why am I even saying that? Everybody knows who he is, especially, come on now, come on. It's slated for a November release and it will feature a Snapdragon 617 octa-core processor, 64-bit processor, uh, two gigabytes of RAM, a five inch FHD AMOLED display, which is a bit unusual for HTC. Um, it'll feature uh, 16 gigabytes of onboard storage for the base model, a 13 megapixel camera sensor on the rear, five megapixel camera sensor, wait, scratch that, four ultra pixel camera sensor on the front, which is interesting. HTC just doesn't want to drop that ultra pixel sensor. Uh, we have a fingerprint scanner, a 2100 milliamp battery. Uh, there's a micro SD card slot for expandable storage. And best of all, or pretty cool feature, uh, is that it'll feature a metal build construction measuring in at only seven millimeters thick. And it'll be available in six colors apparently. So yeah, this looks to be a pretty sweet mid-level device. It's not the flagship or high-end device that I was kind of anticipating, and I think a lot of you were too. As much as I want HTC to recover and become a main dominant player in the smartphone industry, I have felt kind of left down from HTC this year. Um, I might just have too high of expectations, 
Now, we don't really know much about the A9. Hopefully, it'll be a pretty awesome device. You know, it'd be awesome if they could get that price down under $300, maybe around $200, and just have this phone sell like hotcakes and maybe help them recover a bit. But I feel like it's not looking that way. We'll, we'll see, but... Fingers crossed, I guess. Now, the HTC One A9 isn't the only smartphone yet to be announced. LG actually scheduled an event for October 1st to probably announce the dual-screened LG V10. It's supposedly going to feature a secondary auxiliary display above the main display to, I'm assuming, display notifications and various news-related info. Um, it's kind of reminds me, it's a lot like the Samsung Continuum, which had a secondary display at the very bottom of the device underneath the navigation buttons and underneath the main display. But the V10 isn't going to be a low-end device. In fact, it's going to feature some pretty high-end specs. It should feature a 5.7-inch QHD display with a 2560 by 1440 resolution, a hexa-core Snapdragon 808 CPU, 3 gigabytes of RAM, 16 megapixel camera sensor on the rear, 5 megapixel on the front. Uh, we have a micro SD card slot for expandable storage, apparently. I'm really curious about some of the software features that could potentially justify buying a smartphone with a secondary display like the V10. Uh, maybe LG will have some uh, some selling points. Maybe they can create some feature that makes me go, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I could use that. I could actually use that, but we'll see. We should all see on October 1st when it's officially announced. Just after a couple new Nexus devices launch. You like how I related the last story? Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm done with that. The Huawei Nexus, which will launch alongside the LG Nexus 5X, had some fresh new benchmark specs and info leaked this past week. It's codenamed the Huawei Angler, and it received a single core score of 1156 and a multi-core score of 3641 in Geekbench 3, which is pretty impressive. It's not the best scores I've seen, but it's certainly not the worst. But this leak does shed some light on some specifications. Now, we don't know for sure about the screen size. Uh, we, we think that it could be a 5.5 inch display or a 5.7 inch QHD resolution display. There should be a USB type C port on the bottom, keeping this guy charged up. There will be a fingerprint sensor on the back that is a given based off the leaked photos. And it'll be powered by a Snapdragon 810 octa-core processor with three gigabytes of RAM. And of course, it'll run stock Android 6.0 Marshmallow out of the box. I'd say based off this leak and some of the past leaks we've seen of both Nexus devices, I'm kind of leaning more towards the Huawei Nexus just because I'm more curious to see the kind of partnership between Google and Huawei and what kind of Huawei device we see here in the US. So I think that would be kind of interesting. Also, I just like the big screen size. I'm a fan of large smartphone displays. Um, I'm still gonna pick up the both devices, the 5X and the Huawei Nexus, whatever it's called. So stay tuned for that. But you know, I am leaning more towards the larger Huawei device. I mean, both devices are gonna run flawlessly with stock Android 6.0 Marshmallow, so no worries about performance. I don't think you should have anything to worry about. Uh, but mark your calendar, September 29th is when both of these Nexus devices will be official, so look forward to that. With that said, I'm gonna leave you with that and ponder about internet being beamed down from the stars or satellites, I guess, in space. Remember that story I talked about in one of the earlier episodes of Last Week in Tech, it was several weeks ago now, where Elon Musk was planning to beam down free internet from thousands of low orbiting satellites? Well, SpaceX has officially requested FCC permission to begin testing said satellites to create a global spanning internet. Yeah, so if it has the potential for me to cut my alliance with Comcast, I'm all for it. So yeah, that's, that's the official story that I'll be using to end the show with. With that said, guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It really does help show your support and make sure to click that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of my upcoming tech reviews and news videos, including, of course, all of the upcoming Last Week in Tech videos. Uh, you can send in your tech news story suggestions to Twitter using the LWIT hashtag. I might include some of your suggestions in next week's episode. As always, though, I'm Bo HD. Thank you for watching, and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.